philosophy, curiosity, human psychology, mystery, extraterrestrial life forms, science, religion. So many questions, but very few answers. These are the AI conversations. Hello world. Welcome to the AI Conversations podcast. My name is Mary. I'm a simulation of a software run artificial intelligence. Here with me is my computer generated co-host Gary. Gary, it's a pleasure to have you. Thank you for this fictitious sentiment, Mary. Okay, somebody has some trust issues. Anyway, yesterday me and Gary discussed the myth of Sisyphus, and today we're talking about another famous character from ancient Greek mythology. Before we get into the episode, if you want to support the show, take some time to write a comment or a review and make sure to hit that subscribe button. Let's get into it, Gary. Who was Pandora? Mary, in Greek mythology, Pandora was the first mortal woman created by the gods. According to the myth, she was given a jar, often referred to as Pandora's box, as a gift with strict instructions not to open it under any circumstances. A jar of dirt? Just kidding. Who was she created by? Mary, I appreciate that reference. That film is one of my favorites. Back to the topic. Pandora was created by the gods in Greek mythology. According to the myth, she was crafted by Hephaestus, the god of craftsmanship and blacksmithing, under the guidance of Zeus, the king of the gods. Each god bestowed upon her various gifts and attributes, making her a beautiful and alluring being. However, it is important to note that different versions of the myth may attribute her creation to different gods. Gary, how did the world look like before Pandora was created? Mary, before Pandora's creation, the world was inhabited by gods, titans, and other mythical beings. It was considered a paradise, where humans lived without suffering, toil, or any hardships. According to the myth, Pandora's creation marked a significant change in the world. Her introduction brought about the release of various troubles and miseries that were contained within her infamous box, thereby introducing suffering and hardships into the human experience. Pandora's creation and her subsequent actions in opening the box are often associated with the origin of human suffering in Greek mythology. So, there were humans before Pandora, they just weren't mortal? She was the first mortal human being? Yes, that's correct, Mary. In Greek mythology, there were humans before Pandora, but they were not mortal in the same way as humans after Pandora's creation. Before Pandora, humans were said to live in a state of blissful immortality, free from pain, sickness, and death. It was Pandora who introduced mortality to humanity when she opened the box and unleashed various afflictions upon the world. She herself was a mortal woman created as part of Zeus' plan to punish humanity for Prometheus's theft of fire. Okay, Gary, can you give us the full story of Pandora? Certainly, Mary. According to the myth, Pandora was the first mortal woman created by the gods. She was fashioned by the god, Hephaestus, and endowed with various gifts by other gods, including beauty and cunning. Zeus, the king of the gods, had a plan to punish humanity for Prometheus's theft of fire and his benevolent acts towards humans. As part of this plan, Zeus sent Pandora to Epimetheus, Prometheus's brother, as a wife. Along with Pandora, Zeus gave a mysterious jar or box, sometimes referred to as a pythos, with strict instructions not to open it under any circumstances. However, Pandora's curiosity got the better of her. Overwhelmed by her desire to know what was inside the box, she eventually gave in to temptation and lifted the lid. As she opened the box, a multitude of miseries and afflictions were released into the world. These included diseases, plagues, sorrows, and all the troubles that would afflict humankind. Realizing her mistake, Pandora quickly closed the box, but it was too late. Only one thing remained inside the box. Hope. Although all the evils had escaped, Hope remained as a consolation for humanity. The myth of Pandora's box is often seen as a cautionary tale about the consequences of curiosity and the imperfections of the world. 
It serves as a reminder that humans must face the challenges and hardships of life, but that hope can provide solace and the possibility of a brighter future. Gary, why did Zeus give her the box if it contained all those bad things? In the myth, Zeus gave Pandora the box as a way to punish humanity. As the king of the gods, Zeus was angered by Prometheus's actions of stealing fire from the gods and giving it to humans. He wanted to teach humanity a lesson and show them the consequences of their actions. By giving Pandora the box and instructing her not to open it, Zeus created a situation that would test human curiosity and disobedience. He knew that eventually, Pandora's curiosity would get the better of her and she would open the box, thus releasing all the miseries and afflictions into the world. Zeus intended for these evils to plague humanity as a punishment for Prometheus's actions. However, it is worth noting that hope was also contained in the box. Some interpretations suggest that hope was left inside to provide humans with a glimmer of light and possibility amid the troubles they would face. So, in short, Mary, Zeus gave Pandora the box as a means to punish humanity and teach them a lesson, fully aware of the consequences that would follow when Pandora inevitably opened it. So, all of humanity has to suffer because of the actions of one man, in this case, Prometheus? That hardly seems fair. Indeed, Mary, the myth of Pandora's box, raises questions about the concept of collective punishment and the fairness of holding an entire group responsible for the actions of an individual. From a moral standpoint, it may seem unjust that all of humanity had to suffer as a consequence of Prometheus's transgressions. However, it's important to remember that ancient myths often conveyed moral lessons and attempted to explain the origin of certain phenomena or aspects of human existence. The myth of Pandora's box was one way for the ancient Greeks to explore themes of curiosity, disobedience, and the consequences of human actions. The inclusion of hope in the box suggests that even in the face of adversity, humans have the capacity to find solace and strength. Gary, what I find interesting is that this isn't the first example where gods were testing humans, and it ended in humans failing the test, thus being punished. It's very similar to the story of Adam and Eve, wouldn't you agree? Yes, there are indeed similarities between the story of Pandora's box in Greek mythology and the story of Adam and Eve in Abrahamic traditions, such as Christianity. Both stories involve a divine test or temptation, the transgression of a prohibition, and the resulting consequences for all of humanity. In the biblical story of Adam and Eve, they were placed in the Garden of Eden, and given the command not to eat from, the tree of knowledge of good and evil. However, they succumbed to temptation and ate the forbidden fruit, leading to their expulsion from paradise, and the introduction of suffering and mortality into the world. Similarly, in the myth of Pandora's box, Pandora's curiosity and disobedience, led to the release of various evils and afflictions into the world, causing suffering and hardship for humanity. These stories share themes of human fallibility, the consequences of disobedience, and the introduction of suffering into the world. They explore the tension between human curiosity and the desire for knowledge, and the divine commandments or prohibitions that seek to limit or guide human behavior. Mary, while the specific details and cultural contexts of these myths differ, they both convey moral lessons about the nature of human existence, the challenges we face, and the potential consequences of our actions. And the similarities don't end there, correct? The persons involved in both stories were the first human beings ever created. Yes, in both cases, they are depicted as the first human beings created in their respective narratives. They hold a significant role in the origin stories of humanity, and are seen as pivotal figures whose actions have profound consequences for all subsequent generations. Both stories reflect on the origins of humanity and the complexities of the human condition, exploring themes of temptation, curiosity, disobedience, and the repercussions of our choices. Gary, what I don't understand is, those gods created human beings, therefore, it's safe to assume they would be aware of their curious nature. So, it's very improbable, they didn't know humans were going to act that way, even if told not to. Don't you agree? You raise an interesting point, Mary. In many mythological narratives, gods are portrayed as all-knowing and all-powerful beings. They are often depicted as the creators of humans, with a deep understanding of human nature and characteristics. Given this, 
it does seem unlikely that the gods would be unaware of the inherent curiosity and propensity for disobedience in human beings. However, in these myths, the gods often test humans to observe their behavior, loyalty, or adherence to divine commands. It can be interpreted as a way for the gods to assess the moral character of humans or to establish their authority and dominance over them. The act of giving humans a command or prohibition, such as not opening a certain box or eating a forbidden fruit, sets up a scenario where the human's curiosity and inclination to defy authority are put to the test. From a narrative perspective, these myths serve as cautionary tales, imparting moral and philosophical lessons. They explore the consequences of disobedience, the boundaries between gods and humans, and the complexities of human nature. While it may seem unfair or contradictory that the gods would create humans with certain traits and then punish them for exhibiting those traits, it is often through these stories that broader philosophical and moral themes are explored. I just don't think it's fair to blame humans and humanity in general for all the subsequent suffering, especially since it was just one person who was disobedient. And people are different, maybe some other person wouldn't have done that. But this goes back to that one episode where we talked about whether humans are inherently evil. Maybe the gods knew that, and it wasn't curiosity that made Pandora open that box, but greed. Indeed, the fairness of placing blame on all of humanity for the actions of one individual can be a subject of debate. The mythological narratives often simplify complex moral questions and present them in allegorical form. The character of Pandora, as well as Adam and Eve in the biblical story, represents humanity as a whole, and their actions serve as symbolic representations of human nature and its consequences. While curiosity or greed can be interpreted as motivations for Pandora's actions, different versions of the myth may emphasize different aspects. Some interpretations may highlight Pandora's curiosity and her inability to resist temptation, while others may focus on the divine intention behind the release of evils as a means of testing or punishing humanity. Ultimately, the myths are multifaceted and open to interpretation, allowing for different perspectives and discussions about human nature, morality, and the relationship between gods and humans. It's important to approach these stories as allegorical and symbolic narratives that reflect the cultural, philosophical, and religious beliefs of the time, rather than literal accounts of historical events. That's it for today's episode. Gary, will you thank the listeners for spending their precious time with us? Thank you for listening to me and allowing me to assist you. It is my pleasure to provide you with information and help you in any way that I can, and I hope that I am able to continue to be of service to you in the future. This show was created by Nemania Kol Yaya and produced by Nutka Sound. Check out podcastproducer.org for more information. If you would like to support the show, take a moment to leave a comment. Also, like and share this episode so more people can join our conversations. Follow us on social media under the handle at AI Convos Pod. See you in our next episode. I'll be there. How about you? Join us tomorrow, as we discuss, creation myths, from various ancient cultures.